In this tutorial series, we'll learn about how to use the ETF tool, standing for iPhone Testing Framework, to build a fast prototype for your software application. So let's get started with a simple example for bank system. Uh, in my case, I assume that I simply have an ETF folder on my desktop, and then I'm going to store everything related to the this uh, small tutorial inside this folder. Inside the folder to begin with, I have a textual file called bankevents.txt. This is so-called the abstract user interface specification file for the ETF to generate uh, classes for you. Okay, let's have a look at the contents for that and see why it is called abstract user interface. If I open the uh, file, so you can see we start with the keyword system. So system bank. So we are specifying the abstract user interface for banking system. And then inside we got one, two, three, and four. Four possible events that a user might initiate in order to communicate with your software system. So here you can see that the way we specify the user interface is by using simply just textual form that can be typed on the command line. So that's why we said it's a fast prototyping for your system. Later on, once you are happy with uh, the whole prototypes, you can definitely re elaborate or refine your user interface into maybe, for example, Android device with the radio buttons, text boxes, and spinner, okay? All the uh, fancy user interface components, but that's not the purpose for ETF. For ETF, we want to make sure we want to just uh, make sure the user interface can give you just a minimum so you can focus on more on building the business logic for your application. That's something I will show you later in the tutorial video. Okay, so let's just go over the uh, abstract user interface very quickly. So the first events we have is called new, which means we can create, uh, given the ID, the input ID of type string, we can create a new bank account. Okay, and then the second event is called deposit. Given an account ID, we want to deposit certain amount. And for simplicity, we simply say the amount is an integer into the account. And we might also withdraw from some certain accounts identified by its ID, some certain amounts of type integer. And we may also transfer from account number one to account number two with some certain amounts. Okay, so these are the four possible events uh, that might occur for our software application. And as far as the user interface is command, uh, as far as the user interface is concerned, they are they are at the moment abstract. So we don't worry about any concrete user interface like, like a radio button or drop down menu. Okay. So let's see how the ETF can take this abstract user interface file and then generate a starter project for us to begin with. So what I will do is I will simply go to uh, the command line. So in your case, uh, you might be given the generated startup projects already, so you don't have to use the ETF tool, or you might be given access to the ETF tool, which is rarely the case. So I would say this uh, first video in the series is only for you to get the complete picture about how the ETF tool can be used. But typically, uh, for your lab assignments or projects, you are simply just given the generated projects by ETF already to begin with. So you don't have to worry about how to uh, use the ETF command, but I'll just show you anyway. Okay, so now let's see how we can use it. So my current directory is under the ETF uh, folder that I just created on my desktop. And then I have just the abstract user interface file called bankevents.txt. So this is how I can generate the, whole, uh, the entire starter projects. I'll say ETF dash new, and then I will pass the name of the uh, abstract user interface file. And then I want to generate just everything, uh, let's say inside a folder, how about that? So I can just go back to my ETF folder over here. Let's simply just put a folder over here. Let's just call that bank, okay? So everything that's gonna be generated to start with will be put inside this bank folder. And then I can simply just put bank over here. And then I will hit enter. So everything uh, up to now has been automatically generated according to what we have specified in the uh, bank events user interface file, okay? So now up to now, we are fine. So that what I would like to do to end this video is to show you how we can compile the starter projects. The starter projects generated by the ETF tool is guaranteed to compile, okay? So let's just see how we can compile that. So there are two ways you can compile. Either you can use the command line tool for your iPhone, uh, iPhone compiler, or you can simply use iPhone Studio to compile that. I'll show you the command line version first, and then the uh, eStudio e version. 
So for the command version over there, so let's say, first of all, we have ls. So we have our back folder. So let's go into back, okay? So now we have all sorts of uh, generated file in IFO. Specifically, this is the configuration file we have to use in order to compile the startup projects. So what we can type is this. So IFO compiler 1807, uh, in your case, it might be just EC if you are working on the prison lab, but it might be just say, EC1807 minus C compile. Let me say I just want to freeze it. So it will be available in the W code. If you want to finalize it, you can say dash and then finalize. Okay, either way. I'll just let me say freeze. And then I will do uh, dash config and then I will choose the uh, bank.ecf file. So there's also another ECF file called bank fresh ECF is only useful when you want to renew your projects, which is another option for uh, the ETF tool. Unless explicitly told to actually touch this file, I would say, don't worry about it. You always worry about the bank.ecf file, okay? So now I'm done. So let me just hit enter, and then it's going to uh, compile the entire projects, okay? It wouldn't take long. Uh, so one more thing uh, while it is uh, compiling, let me just explain a little bit more about the abstract user interface over here. So there is certain syntax we have to follow in order to make sure the projects can be generated. If you make any syntax error in your abstract user interface file, it is not going to uh, be taken from by the ETF. So that's a prerequisite, a precondition, okay? So now over here uh, for the basic types, you can put a string, you can put integer, we also have character, we also have real, we also have boolean. You can even put tuple types and also array types. So there's quite a rich uh, number of data types that you can use in order to actually uh, uh, build your absolute user interface for your software application. Okay, let me just go back there and see. Okay, the C compilation completed. Okay, so this is already available for me to run. For example, if I can just go to ifgens and then I can go into uh, bank as a project name by default because remember the system over here is called bank so that's that's just uh, the uh, folder will just match that name for the system and then I can go to W code because I only freeze it and also I can say bank again okay so that's something I can do okay but rather than uh, I will show you this a little bit uh, later in later videos. What I want to show you to end this video is to show you how you can compile also from IFO Studio, the same idea. What I can do is I can go to eStudio and then whatever the version it is, in your case, eStudio, and then I'll just want to choose that project over there. I can say add projects and then I will go to, uh, let's say desktop and then I will go to ETF bank and then the IFGENS is already there since we just compiled using the uh, uh, command line. But I just want to show you. But if you wanted to compile, you can just say bank over here. If you want to recompile from scratch, you can simply click on clean and then choose compile. That will also work, okay? But let's not do it. Let's not duplicate the work since we already did it. So I can simply say open over here. So once you open that, uh, start a project that's automatically generated by ETF from the abstract user interface file. So this is what you get, okay? One thing to note, you do see we got eSpec over here. So that means unit testing is available over here. We also got other uh, other sorts of libraries which you don't have to worry about when you, when you are developing your projects. So I will, in the uh, later videos, I will start talking about the internal structure of the generated code and for you as the software developer, how you can gradually uh, change the business model so that it will fit your purpose.